The 27 books which make up the New Testament of the Holy Bible were first and formally canonized in North Africa in the years 393 and 397 AD. However, our oldest surviving manuscripts of the Gospels and the various epistles goes back to the 2nd century and not the 4th, with the original New Testament documents having been written in the mid to later part of the 1st century. For example, the Gospel of John was written somewhere between 90 and 100 AD, while the other three Gospels, along with the Acts of the Apostles, were written before John, with the letters of Paul written even before that. The purpose of this work is to gather the references of Jesus Christ found within the Gospels and compare them with the historical writings that mention Christ and his followers, the Christians, outside of the books of the New Testament. It is the intent of this author to make a strong case in support of the belief that Jesus Christ did indeed exist and that the accounts of Jesus in the four Gospels are in fact history and not fantasy. In 49 AD, the Jewish community of Rome was overtaken by a surge of rioting. The chaos became so uncontrollable that the Emperor Claudius was led to make the drastic decision of banishing all Jews from the borders of Rome. This historical event is also recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 18 verse 2 to be specific, and helps give credence to the truth of the New Testament. Additionally, the Roman historian Suetonius, who wrote biographies of the first twelve Roman emperors around the year 120 AD, states in his Life of Claudius that the emperor, quote, expelled the Jews from Rome on account of the riots in which they were constantly indulging at the instigation of Crestus, unquote. This Crestus, being a common name for a slave, was also a popular misspelling of the name of Christ. Thus, the riots in the Jewish community of Rome at this time must have been directly related to the introduction of Christianity into Rome's Jewish quarter, which in turn resulted in violence and ultimately Jewish expulsion. Remember, without Christ there would be no Christianity. And given that this story is found in both the Bible and elsewhere in Roman history, makes the case for the historical Christ even more tangible. A contemporary of the Roman writer Suetonius was a distinguished man of letters known as Pliny the Younger. Becoming the imperial legate of the Roman province of Bithynia in 111 AD, Pliny established himself as one of the world's great letter writers and is known for his extensive correspondence with the Emperor Trajan. Much of the correspondence between Pliny and Trajan focused on the rapid rise of Christianity in the empire, especially in Bithynia and in Pontus. For during Pliny's governorship, the followers of Jesus had grown to such an extent that the pagan temples were almost completely abandoned. It was also noted that as a result of the people moving towards the worship of Christ and renouncing paganism, the providers of the animals for the sacrifices to the pagan gods were at risk of losing their livelihood. Now even though these events took place several decades after Christ, their written record concerning the early Christian movement serves as the evidence which points to Jesus Christ as being a genuine historical personality. Another biblical parallel that most astonishingly coincides with the historical record has to do with the crucifixion of Christ and the darkness which encompassed the entire world at the time of our Lord's crucifixion. Now according to the Gospels, Jesus was crucified on Friday morning at around 9 a.m. And as the Gospel of Luke tells us, while Jesus was on the cross, from about 12 noon until 3 p.m., there was a darkness over all the earth and the sun was darkened. See Luke chapter 23, verses 44 and 45. Though the crucifixion of Christ took place in Jerusalem, this darkness which St. Luke describes covered the entire planet. Evidence of this occurrence was recorded by a Greek judge living in Athens at that time. He is quoted as saying, Either God the creator of the world is suffering, or the world is ending. This Greek judge would later become a disciple of the Apostle Paul and is mentioned in the 17th chapter of the book of Acts. For this Gentile who recorded the suffering of God would also become a great saint of the church. He is identified in Acts chapter 17 verse 34 as none other than Dionysios the Areopagite. Thus, from this account we see both the Bible and history supporting one another and not contradicting each other. Finally, we come to the famous Jewish historian Flavius Josephus, who lived in first century Palestine and who also made mention of Jesus in his notable works, The Jewish Wars and the Antiquities of the Jews. In his writings, Josephus describes Jesus as a wise man, a doer of wonderful works. Josephus also wrote about the crucifixion of Jesus and even stated how it was Pontius Pilate who, at the suggestion of the Jewish leadership, 
condemn Jesus to death on the cross. Apart from Josephus' first century account on the life of Christ and his followers the Christians, we also possess a fourth century account which goes into much detail concerning Jesus and the history of the early church. This early Christian work is known as the Ecclesiastical History, written around the year 325 AD by Eusebius, a bishop of Caesarea. Although this document cannot possibly give a first-hand account on the life of Jesus, it does indeed serve the purpose of recording the history of the early church and thus gives credibility to the religion of Christianity. This is the Leap of Faith.